Let me show you how to make this delicious and super easy peach cobbler dump cake. It's so good. And I'll show you some other things that you may have missed. So I'm starting off with three cans. These are 15 ounce cans of sliced peaches and they are in heavy syrup. I'm also going to be using a spice cake mix. You could use yellow box cake mix. I like the spice cake. Here I have one stick of unsalted butter that's going to go into this recipe, a 9 by 13 pan. So I'm going to start by dumping in all of the peaches with the syrup and not the lid, by the way. Now you're just going to shake on the boxed cake mix of your choice. Like I said, yellow goes great with this. I'm just going to spread that out and coat it evenly, but you don't want to mix it just on the top. At this point, you'll want to slice thin pats of butter and just put them right on top. And this is going into a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And you'll want to bake this for about an hour. And here we are. My kitchen smells amazing. This is bubbly, crispy, crusty goodness. And this really does come in a pinch when you need to make something that's just super easy to put together and you have guests coming over. So I'm digging right in. You might want to let it set before digging into, but this goes perfect over a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Okay, so let me show you some other things that I make when I'm home that you may have missed. Let me show you the breakfast I've made three times this week. So I'm starting off with some cottage cheese and two large eggs. I'm just going to crack two eggs into a blender here with a cottage cheese. I'm gonna season with garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper, season how you like. I've seen people do Italian or oregano and just blend that until it is all blended and pureed together. I'm gonna to take some cooking oil and spread it on a baking sheet and then put my parchment paper so it'll stick and then a little more cooking oil because I don't want things to stick and now pour over the mixture. Now, what you don't wanna do is what I did in this video. Try not to spread it too thin. You want it kind of thick. And then you're gonna bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it looks like this. So it should be easy to peel off of the parchment paper and I'm gonna cut it into two pieces because it's two servings, myself and my son, and fill it with what you like. I like to add some everything bagel seasoning and crushed red pepper flakes on top of avocado. And then I'm gonna add slices of turkey breast meat, some lettuce, and sometimes I add tomato and cucumber, but this is the wrap and it's so good. My husband wanted pulsam, and I'm using his recipe. <laughs> so I started boiling two chunks of pork belly, and I'm gonna add some ingredients to it. Some of them you might question, but anyway. Onion, here I have some instant Korean coffee. Yes, my husband likes to use this. You could just use regular coffee grounds. I have garlic, ginger, scallion. I'm also using salt and duenjang, which is soybean paste. Okay, so mash the garlic and the ginger, peel the garlic, cut the garlic. I'm going to chop everything, add the scallion, the onion, garlic, ginger, salt. Here's the duenjang, that's the Korean soybean paste. And I'm gonna add this instant Korean coffee. This is how my husband makes it. Make it however you want it. Okay, I'm gonna give that a mix and let it boil for an hour and a half or until it is tender like this. So I'm going to create an ice water bath to basically stop the cooking and cool the meat. And like I said, it's just two pork belly chunks going in and just let it set until you can slice through it easily. So I have fermented older kimchi and here is some new kimchi. I'm eating both. I love both with this pulsam and I'm doing quality control. I need to go for a bite. Yeah, this is good. Okay, for those of you that asked, here's my easy hash brown casserole recipe. Okay, I'm working with 32 ounces of thawed shredded potatoes or hash browns going into a large bowl. To that, I'm adding one can of condensed chicken soup. I'm also going to add some onion powder maybe like a half teaspoon, some cracked black pepper. I'm also going to add eight ounces of sour cream. Here, I'm going to add one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Give that a mix. I'm also going to add about mm, a half teaspoon of seasoned salt blend. And I don't know why I didn't film this, but I also added a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika. Here, I'm adding half of an eight ounce block 
of shredded Colby Jack cheese. That's all I had. Use cheddar. Give that a mix. And now I'm going to put this in a buttered baking dish. Like a 9 by 13 works, but I'm using, I think this is a 12 by 8 or an 8 by 12. Here I'm just going to spread that out evenly and top it with the rest of that shredded cheese. In all, 8 ounces of cheese works for this. If you want it cheesier, add more cheese. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle a little more of that seasoned salt. And this is going in a preheated oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes or until it looks like this. Some people like to add one egg. I used to add one egg into my hash brown casserole, but it comes out a lot creamier without the egg. Okay, so my husband's going to help me remove this. And I want to show you how wonderful and bubbly and cheesy and crusty it gets on the edges. This is just hash brown casserole perfection. So I am going to dive in and serve some. I actually made this along with my holiday ham recipe in the slow cooker. To my profile, that video is there somewhere. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite combos, sweet glazed slow cooked smoked ham and this cheesy, creamy, delicious hash brown casserole that's so easy to make. Okay, so you gotta try this. It's so good. I'm gonna do like a ground beef rice dish, kind of all together. It's like picadillo and rice mixed together in one pan. So I'm gonna start toasting my rice. It, you make it fragrant, aromatic, a light golden color. It just helps to keep the texture. Okay. So onion. The temperature I have this on is like a medium low heat. Going in with the ground beef. This is a salt, pepper, garlic blend. I'm just gonna season the ground beef. And onion powder. This is granulated onion powder. Going in with, this is just the potato that I diced. So I've been kind of like, redoing recipes and coming up with like one pan recipes using this type of like can. So ground cumin going in. This is one zucchini. This is the tomato chicken bouillon, like tablespoon and a half maybe. Diced chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. I'm going, ah, going with like a tablespoon. This could turn out really, really good or a hot mess. I have a little bit of corn left over from dinner the other night that's going in. And I instantly regret adding all of this to the small pan, but we'll see how it goes. Two cups of water. Adding the chipotle in adobo sauce into this rice, Mexican rice, picadillo, ground beef mashup. <sighs> Smells good. Fresh cilantro. I always say for my people that taste soap with cilantro, just leave it out. Cover with a lid. We're going to let that simmer. It's going to take like 15 to 18 minutes, but I want to make sure that it's at like, um, not like at a rapid boil. You just want it at a consistent simmer so the rice has a chance to cook. So I sped this part up because I was doing a lot of talking during the live chat while it was cooking. So at this point, constant simmer, do not lift the lid and let it cook. So I shut off the heat and I'm not going to lift the lid, but you want to let it set after it cooks. You want to let it set um, for like five to 10 minutes before you lift the lid. Oh my God. Okay. Hmm. Let me show you the salad that I've made like twice this week. Okay. Egg, red onion, tomato, and uh, cucumber. Ah, let's put it on there. It's so fresh and easy to put together when you have all the stuff, but I've been using this combo. I love raw onion. You can call me Shrek, that's okay. Wild tuna, fire roasted peppers, zesty herbs, potatoes, and olives. And it's like this salad topper mix. It's so good. Okay, 
I know it doesn't look like much, and I, you just put it right on top. It's tuna, potatoes, roasted peppers. I made my own little vinaigrette, and the vinaigrette's very simple. A little bit of lemon juice, olive oil, garlic, salt, pepper, red wine vinegar, and Dijon mustard. Mm, pour it over. Pepper. This salad is good as is, but I do love crunchy things, so I've been adding honey mustard onion pretzels. Crunchy element. Okay, going in. Such a good salad. Cook dinner with me. So my son loves butter chicken and I found a very simple, easy way to make it. I'm using some jarred sauces from the store. I'm gonna marinate chicken breast with lemon, Greek yogurt, garam masala seasoning. Of course, this is not a recipe, I'm just eyeballing. Here I have curry powder and Indian curry seasoning, cayenne pepper and fresh ginger that's going to go in. And now I'm just going to give that a really good mix. You'll also want to season with salt. I'm using a garlic salt pepper blend. Give it a mix and let it marinate for an hour. I'm gonna cook some steamed rice in the rice cooker. And like I said, this is just an easy thing I make for dinner. And I guess you could consider this semi-homemade. Okay, so in a hot pan with cooking oil, I'm going to saute and cook the marinated chicken breast. And now just to add some onion powder and fenugreek leaves. Again, this is not much of a recipe. I just wanted to showcase what I do when I'm not really filming a recipe. Okay, jarred sauces going in, and there was only one jar of each at the grocery store, so that's why they're different brands. I simmered this. I'm adding some heavy cream on top for garnish and fresh parsley or cilantro, and that's dinner. I'm gonna scoop some of this cooked rice, and then I'm going to ladle this delicious butter chicken that came together so easily with those jarred sauce mixes. And that's dinner, it's so good. Make dinner with me, super easy. I'm not proud of this, but this is the third time I've eaten this in like the span of a week. Okay, so here's what I've been adding to the mushroom tart, bacon jam. Salad. puts the salad on the slice, or it gets the hose again. It's crispy, oh. Let's go for a bite. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's a good bite. You got to try this, so good. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's do the first. Okay. It's very good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Good, right? Mm -hmm. Let me show you how I make that carnival fair style lemonade. But first, I'm making some Korean corn dogs because, like I said, I'm going to the festival or to the fair today, in my mind. But I'm starting with one lime and one lemon. I rinsed and washed them well. I only had one lemon, so that's why I added a lime. So, you know, just use two lemons, medium. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze them into this large jar, or you could do this in a glass or a big container. You could also use one of those like juicers or lemon squeezers. I'm starting with a quarter cup of sugar. Honestly, I'm probably gonna add more, but it is to your preference and taste. So now I'm going to use the bottom of this like wooden spoon and just muddle and combine the sugar, lime, and lemon. Here I have some cold water. I'm gonna add maybe like a cup and a half. Ultimately, I will be adding two cups into this and just muddle that, mix that, combine it. Now, lots of ice. I'm gonna give that a mix. You'll wanna give it a taste. But what I'm gonna do is add the rest of that cold water. Remember, two cups. Now mix and give it a taste and it should be perfect. I like it. 
And let's not forget the corn dog, because again, in my mind, I'm at a fair, at a festival, but you know, at home. But you definitely should give the lemonade a try because it's so refreshing and it's so good. Yay.